Flowmaster is Bentley's hydraulic calculator product. It's a nice little product. It's unlike our big network models like water gems and sewer gems. It's oriented towards doing individual hydraulic uh, components, whether it's an individual pipe or a weir or a gutter and inlet. It, it's oriented towards doing individual ones and not networks. But as such, it's a nice, simple model. It's very easy to learn and pays for itself in the time the, to run calculations very quickly. Now, where Flowmaster is is on your desktop is going to be this symbol here with the yellow circle with the green, blue, and red triangles around it. That's how you open up Flowmaster is clicking on that. And you end up in the uh, Flowmaster opening dialog. Now, Flowmaster really is based on individual hydraulic worksheets. And these worksheets are usually grouped together in what's called a project, which is basically one big file. So a project is a collection of worksheets. Now, you don't really have to, uh, if you're just doing a calculation one time, you're not going to save it. You could just create a worksheet, or you could create a project. A project is automatically cre uh, created when you open up a worksheet. Now, when you say worksheet, you are given the opportunity to say, well, what kind of uh, problem do I want to solve? You see, there's a whole variety of them here. Open channels are essentially anything without a top. Pipes are things with tops, mainly circular, box, elliptical, but you also have an irregular pipe. Uh, we have special uh, calculations for a whole variety of weirs. We have orifices, and we have gutters and inlets. We'll start off today by talking about open channels. Now, finding the normal depth in an open channel with uniform flow uses the Manning's equation. And for a rectangular channel, it's not a very hard calculation. But once you get away from rectangular channels, and even rectangular requires an iterative solution, you can't analytically solve for normal depth in any of these channels very easily because of the nature of Manning's equation. So let's just take an example here. Let's take a trapezoidal channel, which can be kind of difficult to do manually. Okay, this is a typical layout of one of our worksheets in Flowmaster. Now, in our case, we're, we're solving for uniform flow, and let's do the hardest version of the problem, which is solving for normal depth. Okay, so we're, we're going to solve for one parameter, give it all these other parameters. So in this case, we have, let's see, about seven different parameters that you have to specify, and we, we have to give six of them, and it will calculate the seventh. So you could solve for side slope or roughness required. Usually you're solving for normal depth or flow. Those are usually the main parameters. Also, you pick which friction method. Usually for open channels, we're going to use Manning's equation, but we have other equations you can choose for which friction method you want to use. So let's get in here and take this open channel. We have a library here if you click on the ellipse button, but I'm just going to give it a 0.02. Channel slope, let's get a pretty mild slope, like about a, uh, let's see, 0.1% slope, pretty, pretty mild. Uh, and side slope. Now, this is a trapezoidal channel, so we want to have it go about, let's say, about four feet horizontal for one vertical. But then on the other side, let's go five feet. Let's make it difficult. Uh, the bottom width is going to be, let's say, uh, four feet for a trapezoidal channel. And we're going to want to put uh, let's give it five CFS down. So now that we've got all the parameters, next time we hit enter, we calculate the normal depth. In this case, it's pretty shallow. Okay, it's only 0.58, which isn't, uh, you know, which means that water is just going to be trickling along the bottom. One way we could look at this is to go up to the top here and pick cross section, and we could just actually look at the cross section. So that's what the thing will look like. You know, pretty shallow, but a uh, pretty wide channel with just a little bit of flow in the bottom of the channel. So we can do from that point in time, let's go back to the channel, is let's, let's crank the flow up to about 25 CFS. This is a little wider, maybe it's something like an irrigation channel or something of that sort. And now we're going to have 1.28 uh, feet of water in the channel. In addition to these uh, determining variables, uh, the ones that really drive the calculations here in the left pane, we also calculate a bunch of auxiliary variables over here in the right pane. So some of the things we have are flow area, wetted perimeter, hydraulic radius, which are things we need to calculate along the way as we're doing these uh, 
calculations for normal depth. We also give you critical depth, okay? So the depth here is higher than critical depth, which means we're going to be in subcritical flow and our fruit number is less than one. So we get all this information very quickly. We also get the velocity of the channel if we're looking at trying to have scour or not want to scour a dearth channel, for example. So there's a lot of these variables, but, but these are not the input. You can't drive the calculation from these auxiliary uh, parameters. What you can do, though, is use them uh, give you they get additional input or additional outputs you get given the inputs on the right side of the channel. So we see how uh, you know quick and easy it is to set up one of these problems. You you pick the type of uh, worksheet you want to do, and then from there what you do is specify all except one of the unknowns and you solve for that one that you haven't specified. Okay, so we'll keep that one open for now and let's look at um, take another new one. So we'll go up here to New Worksheet. And this time we'll uh, pick a, say a, a sewer that's not flowing full, sewer pipe, circular pipe not flowing full. Okay, so we'll pick OK for that one. And again, this is going to use Manning's formula. We're going to solve, you know, by default we usually say discharge, but I personally usually like to solve for normal depth, and that's oftentimes what we're looking for. Now in this case we'll go about a 1% slope, uh, 0.01. And a diameter of the pipe we're going to pick as, uh, let's pick a 24-inch diameter pipe. And we've got quite a bit of float on there. So let's say we start off with about 5 uh, CFS. And we hit uh, Enter, or we can hit this little refresh button on the top to solve. And we do that, and normal depth is pretty low. Okay, so 5 CFS there doesn't get us very much. So what can you do is we could look at the units and say either we want to go at more decimal places in our normal depth calculation, like that's what we need, or we may want to do it in another unit, such as inches, let's say. Oh, we have no roughness specified there. We, that'll also help us uh, get something better. Go to 0.01 and hit refresh. Okay, so we've got 0.29 or 0.289 feet is the normal depth. We can then convert that though. So let's say we don't want it in feet. We want to know our depth in inches, so we could easily just convert over to inches, and we have 3.4 inches of water in that 24-inch pipe. So again, got a lot of extra capacity in that pipe, so let's change the flow down here, hit 20 CFS, and there we got 6 inches of, of uh, water depth. And again, we have a whole bunch of auxiliary parameters calculated. Uh, you know, we have, again, the flow area, width of perimeter, hydraulic radius, as we did for the open channel. But we also get some additional ones, uh, such as uh, the discharge of that pipe when it's full. Yeah, that's, that's quite a bit of CFS you can get through there when it's full. Um, this, the, uh, in this case, we are in a supercritical range, for example. Okay, we can also, as I said, calculate other kind of properties. We can go and switch, and let's solve now, given that, de uh, that normal depth, let's solve for discharge. And we see we got 20... Uh, cubic feet per second. We said this is a uh, look at the cross section of this pipe. We just have a little bit of water in the bottom at this time. Not a whole lot. Whoops, lost it. Uh, cross section. Let's do it again. Oh, wait a second. I uh, hope you just caught the mistake. I mean, I have 24 feet as the diameter. No wonder it's just a little bit of water in the bottom. Let's change that to 24 inches. That's pretty quick. And um, that converted it to inches, 288, so we're going to now make that inches. And we now have a, uh, now it's going back and trying to find a slope. So let's go back to normal depth as our unknown, put the channel slope back in as 0.01. And we see that we have 19 inches of flow for this high discharge, which we're now going to convert back to about 25 CFS. Okay, so we got 17 inches of depth in this channel in a 24 inch pipe and at a discharge of 25 CFS, and we can now get a better view of it as what the depth looks like. So that's what it's going to look like in the pipe. So it's, it's great to visualize how deep things are. And so now we have a full pipe discharge of 29 uh, CFS, which uh, makes a lot more sense than the number we had up there originally when I had the, the units incorrect. But it just shows you how easy it is to fix the units. If, if you, and it's a, just a common thing that you can do uh, is to very quickly uh, change units and change display. We, we may not want to see three decimal places after normal depth. So we get in there, right-click, go to units and formatting, and say we only want to see one decimal place. 
And we, since this is common to all of the, the Bentley products, but it, it's really a nice feature to be able to change units, change the amount of precision, because you know you, you don't want to display too many uh, values when you're working with the uh, you know results, presenting them to, to someone up the chain of command, for example. Okay, we'll do one more here, and this one here is going to be for a pressure pipe. Okay. So with pressure pipe, we can specify a little bit more information. Instead of specifying the slope, you have to specify the pressure and elevation at each end of the pipe, and the slope will be uh, calculated from that. Okay, And it's actually going to be the slope of the uh, energy grade line, the friction slope. Okay, so let's just take a case where we have a flat pipe, leave our elevations at zero, and we start with uh, 60 PSI at the upper end, and we don't want the uh, pressure to drop any more than 20 at the lower end. So that's going to be a lot of pressure drop. So this is a long pipeline we're talking about here. Let's make this thing about 5,000 feet. And this time we're going to change the roughness for me. We're going to go from Manning's equation to the Hazel-Williams equation. And we do that, we're going to have to put in a Hayes and Williams roughness, which let's say is about 100. And we're going to be looking at a, let's see, this is in inches, so we're going to look at a 12 inch diameter pipe. When we hit that, we can see that we're going to get about 5 cubic feet per second for that pipe, for that type of loss. Over here, we get some other important variables. We see that uh, if you're going to lose 40 uh, PSI over a mile of pipe length, you're going to have a pretty high velocity. We're going to have a velocity here around 6.4 uh, feet per second. And we're going to have to lose a lot of energy, of course, if we drop from 60 to 20. So we have 96 uh, feet of head loss, which is the 40 PSI that we're going to lose along the pipeline. So now what we'd like to do is not only look at the results for, say, one flow rate, but maybe we want to do a rating curve or a rating table for that particular channel, showing, let's say, uh, how the depth varies with the discharge. So in order to do that in Flowmaster, we would go up to the rating curve, or we could just go through and just keep changing the flow, right? We could take the 40 and make it 60 and write down that number and see what the uh, flow looks like at 60. But in our case, we're just going to want to do this in one step. So we go up to the top here to rating curve, okay? And so this is going to plot normal depth. In our case, we're going to plot it against discharge. And we're going to be looking at discharges going from, let's say, zero up to about 80 CFS. And we're going to look at points and in increments of, let's say, 5 CFS. Okay? So by just, now this would be a lot of work to do this manually. It would be multiple calculations all different at every different flow rate. In our case, there we're done. So we can see that as the discharge goes up, the, uh, the depth, the normal depth in that channel goes up. So we started here at, uh, well, you can't really calculate at zero, but when you go to like the first point here is five, and we see we're going to be at seven inches of depth. And as the, the flow rate goes up, the normal depth goes up. Since this is a trapezoidal channel, though, it doesn't go up very dramatically because the flow gets a lot wider as it goes up. And again, as with all the other products we have from Bentley, we have a whole bunch of chart options where you can uh, use different colors, different symbols, etc. cetera. I'm not going to get too much into that right now, but there's a lot of flexibility on the options you have. Okay, so that would be a, a nice simple rating curve. If you want to look at multiple parameters at the same time, you could actually have two uh, properties. Let's look at the effect of the bottom width, the initial bottom width, as well as the discharge. So we'll start with an initial bottom width of zero, which would be a triangular channel, and go from an initial minimum value of, let's say, or a minimum value of zero up to, say, let's say about a six foot wide channel in increments of, let's say, one, one foot. So we go, okay. And this is a whole bunch of different uh, normal depths in the channel versus flow for a given a uh, range of bottom widths. This is the flat part of a trapezoidal channel. And that would have been a lot of work manually calculating that. And you see in this case it was a calculation that was, you know, essentially no time at all to get all those points and get a feel for, okay, I'm going to design this channel. Maybe it's for a flood control or an irrigation channel, or maybe I'm channelizing a uh, some type of natural stream, and I want to get something that is, you know, I want to know how deep the water is going to be for various conditions. In addition to a rating curve, we also give the ability to do a rating table, or again, we're going, let's just say that we did last time, flows going from 0 to 80 in increments of 
10 in this case. Let's so we don't make too big of a table. And there's our table. So not only do you get the normal depth, you get the velocity, flow area, weight of perimeter, top width. We can see how the, the width really changes a lot in these trapezoidal channels with really mild side slopes. So that was a, a, a fairly easy calculation to do, but would have been very difficult to do if you're trying to solve Manning's equation with all those nasty exponents by hand. It would have been a lot of work. Okay, so, so far we've been dealing with uniform flow. Okay, uniform flow means the, the flow is prismatic. Depth does, the flow is not, or the depth and other properties do not change along the channel. But sometimes we have to get involved with gradually varied flow where we have some type of control downstream that changes the flow. We want to see what happens. So in this case, we'll set it up. Um, given the uh, down, uh, downstream depth, we're going to calculate upstream, working our way upstream. We're going to start off with that channel we just ended with. And if we look back there, we see that the critical depth is about 12. And we know we're going to go through a transition. We're going to go to a, a steeper channel. So let's say we're at the downstream depth. It's about 12.5 or 6, I think it was. Uh, and we're going to look about a thousand feet up the channel. Now, actually, very close. Remember the, the uh, backwater calculations that you have to do. Uh, you have to break the distance up into steps. And let's break this up into about a hundred steps. Now, manually, this would be a lot of work, but uh, we'll see how, how quickly this can be done. And we have see calculation successful. If you don't see uh, this green little designation at the bottom of the screen says calculation successful. It means something's wrong. It'll be a red dot there and you need to uh, respond to that error message. Okay, so we can see what the kind of profile, we have an M2 profile and we look at the how the velocity accelerates as we get to that transition through critical flow and we see what the critical depth is and the slope of the channel. But the nice part about this that I really like is the GVF profile that shows you what the slope of the channel looks like and how the the depth changed. So after a thousand feet upstream, we still haven't really gotten up to the normal depth yet. So there's going to be a very long, gradual backwater curve for this particular case. Oh, I typed in a hundred. I thought I typed in a thousand. So let's go and make this a thousand feet so we can see all the way back to where we reach normal depth. So do this again. And again, we'll go look at the GVF profile. Now we see it at about, yeah, about 700 feet. We're pretty much at normal depth, starting out from this, from nearly critical depth to downstream into the channel. So that gives you an idea of how we handle, can handle some pretty complicated, gradually varied flow situations. And also, you could get a tabular results here, where you get not just that graph of of depth versus distance, but also things like weight of perimeter and how the velocity approaches the normal uniform flow velocity as you get farther and farther upstream. So that, that's some uh, additional things you can do beyond just the basic calculation. So we can also do rating curves and gradually vary flow profiles in Flowmaster. Thank you.